Hi, my name is Jill. You are here at Road Culture Rules, and today we're going to be asking the question, should you carry a weapon in your RV, trailer, van, or really your car? Is it a good idea? If you're living mobile, there's probably not a home base, so should you take something with you? That's what we're going to be talking about today, but before we do that, we're going to take a deep breath, hold for four, exhale for four, and we're going to see you on the other side. There we go. So if you're going to say one thing that you need to tell a first time shooter, what would you say? Don't anticipate. When the gun goes off, let it just surprise you. Surprise! <laughs> So I just did my concealed carry class for the state of New Mexico. So thank you to Randy Glover and to MAG's uh, shooting establishment for providing the opportunity for me to learn from that. Uh, and I cannot obviously cover everything that we went over in that class, nor can I cover the entire range of safety and security information. So I'm actually going to break these out and do kind of a security safety series because there's so many things to consider. And you know, like I had mentioned last week, I haven't really talked a lot about that because I don't really want to know what people to know what's going on at my house. But this is a broader discussion about things to actually think about if you are going to be living a nomadic life, whether you're sedentary or actively moving, or if you're just needing to think about it. So this is going to be a series. This is going to be part one, obviously. And so I want to include a caveat with the information that I share. This is my opinion and interpretation of legal information. You're responsible to do your own research and to, your, to provide your own understanding. This is not legal advice. And I think that covers it. So I'm including two links below this video to give you uh, information on state legal uh, regulation and reg laws and regulations on carrying a gun and that is uh, the app called Legal Heat and there's also a book. The benefit of the app obviously it's an online information source that will give you more up-to-date information but not everybody's got an app or a phone to get one by so those links are below. So when I talk about, do you want to carry a weapon? Uh, most of us, you know, think about it as a gun, but that could be anything. It could be pepper spray, it could be a knife, it could be uh, anything, you know, a baseball bat, anything that you consider to be a defensive object in terms of keeping yourself safe. Uh, so I'm gonna do that kind of as a broad stroke because again, this is my big takeaway. There's federal law and there's state law. Uh, and they're very different, and because there's overlap, it makes it a little bit more difficult. So the first thing I want to say about that is that the federal law covers you while you're actively in motion traveling on a highway. But when you stop and sleep, basically, which you'll be doing if you're in an RV or a trailer, uh, when you, or your car, when you stop and sleep, you are now in residence of the state that your physical presence is in. So that makes it kind of confusing because in some ways federal law applies, but then again, it depends on what your activity is. Are you mobile or stationary? Then you are deferring into state law and every state is very different so obviously I can't do a comprehensive video on state by state so that really is when it's your responsibility but I think if you take one thing away from this is that you have to remember uh, the difference between state and federal and it's not just about where you or your car is but that includes buildings property events uh, any kind of agency or uh, interior like the Bureau of Land Management versus a state park. So 
There is a lot of variation in what gets defined if you're on state or federal. Uh, we have to include the Native American population because their land is under a separate category. So, the, And the last one is private property. And most of those laws and regulations are going to be under trespass law. And sometimes the only way that you'll understand what the rules are, I buy what's posted. That means you have to be able to see what's posted, know where it is, and to know what it means. So it gets a little bit confusing, but I wanted to bring up all those aspects because it isn't just about carrying a gun. It's about carrying anything that could be defined as a weapon, depending on what, you're, what state you're in. But as we all know, the climate is changing on such a radically fast basis. Who knows? Because the other piece of that I want to throw out here is there is the law as the law defined it, there is the law as the agency may define it. There's the law as the court may define it. There's the law as the enforcement official may define it. And then there's the law as the private person might understand or define it. So just because something is legal in that moment, it does not mean that you won't get a different interpretation. You know, it may get sorted out later, but there's a lot of ramifications to that. And I think the biggest thing about that that was my takeaway is that uh, a lot of the, of the rules can result in a felony. Now, I don't know about you, but I got the dog, so I don't really want to be hauled off with a felony charge because I did something wrong. Uh, we, I think that when we talk about things like carrying a gun or carrying a weapon, our primary area of focus is on how to use it and or having it used on us and what the ramifications are going to be. My takeaway is the bigger danger is not knowing the rules about having it on your person or in your proximity, which brings us to the vehicle itself. So that's one of the questions I asked. How do you actually carry some kind of weapon with you? And uh, again, you know, there's some room for uh, movement on that, but I wanted to go to what is the most precise way to do it. And the, the general answer, again, not legal advice, is any driver section, you don't want to have it with you, it needs to be away from the driver section. So let's say that would be the trunk of a car. Obviously, you couldn't do that in a van. Uh, in the back of the RV, uh, in, in the trailer itself, uh, as far away from you as possible was my takeaway, and then have it in its own container. And then if it's a gun, then gun and ammunition need to be separate. Uh, so that was the best general answer that I could get or hear or understand. Uh, you know, in terms of when you leave, then we're getting more into the concealed carry, open carry, state rules and regulations. You're taking your chance with that. <laughs> And so while there is reciprocity between some states, meaning if you have uh, documentation to support your rights in one state, they may or may not be valid in another state. And again, you know, you're going to have to defer to uh, the laws of that particular state to see if it's covered. But again, what makes me nervous is just because it's written as a law doesn't necessarily mean the person you're interacting with is interpreting it that way which can create a lot of problems, which makes me really nervous about carrying anything on my person. Again, not telling you what I'm doing. <laughs> so that's kind of the brief, short overview of uh, the legal aspect of should you carry something with you and where should you carry it. Uh, the last thing I will say is that uh, if you are going to be in a place where your car is going to be searched in terms of crossing borders, within the United States, you know, it might be something that you want to think about how you uh, locate it, where it might be hidden at, is something to think about. But even more importantly, for those of us especially who live down on the southern border, is crossing into Mexico. Uh, I'm not as familiar with Canada, but I will tell you crossing into Mexico creates a whole different set of problems. And, you know, when you're leaving uh, our country to another country or any country, I guess, who's watching this, uh, it's not just state and federal. It's now international law versus that 
source country's law. So it's your responsibility to figure all that out and also take your chance. So there's no really simple, easy solution to any of this. I think that was my real takeaway was it was a little bit more complicated than I would have liked it to be, but very good information uh, to know. So thank you, Randy, and something to consider. Uh, and I'm going to toss it back to you. So again, we're going to talk about more different ideas around safety and security, but that's sort of the entry point should you carry something with you on your person or in your vehicle um, is that going to be a good idea for you and then how important it is to define what a weapon is depending on what state you're in obviously california is one of the worst states i was concerned because i do have to go back there so that's that so before we go we're going to take one more deep breath for the road as i hope you'll rise with the sun in your eyes Love in your heart, feet firmly on the ground as together we walk on Survival Road, whether we're carrying anything with us or not. So I will say, I hope you have a great day. I hope you will live free and die wild, and we will see you next time. Oh